When I was 21 and I had my awakening, I was watching loads of Bob Proctor and The Secret and Abraham Hicks. And I was acting on every single thought in every single moment. So I'd get the feeling to go in my car. i go in my car. I'd get the feeling to go out of the car. I'd leave the car. I'd then get the feeling to go to the casino. i go to the casino. When I'm at the casino, I get the feeling to go to the other casino. And on the way, I get the feeling to go back. And I was literally impulsively acting on the last thought to see where I'd end up in the universe. Cut long story short, the person I was falling in love with was called Robin. That's all I was thinking about at that moment in my time. When am I going to see that person, Robin, again? Following each thought to the petrol station, to leave the petrol station, every single person that I met at the petrol station, at the cashier, at the casino, every single person in a row, five people, all called Robin. What's crazy is that that's a really unique rare name. <laughs> so that's a really good uh, thing. Let me enlighten that a little bit uh, further, you know, like, so it is so it is so powerful to know that we don't need to shield ourselves anymore today like when we have that bright vibration and we understand ours how to keep that vibration and no matter what comes our way no matter who wants something different than what we think we need to do right now or that pulls us into our evolving path it can all become part of it it can all harmonize i have also realized that a lot of awakened people they're, they're single and they don't really want the family life or kids or partners. I love almost anything very human. Like, I, like I, I, some of my best friends are not at, at all awakened. They're very deep asleep and, <laughs> and I love them. I couldn't love them more. I have the best time with them. That's the universe going absolutely amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh So I recently went to a huge festival in the UK called Medicine Festival, and it's a spiritual festival with loads of hippies and breath work and yoga and your usual people that live in the jungle and then come out to these festivals and then you don't really see them elsewhere. They've all got dreads and earrings and tattoos and they're just the, they're connected to nature and the earth. And I was walking around and I suddenly got the urge just to go back to where I was. And as I was walking, I suddenly saw a teacher of mine that used to teach me maths 15 years ago and I've not seen since school and I was walking past and I was going to say Mrs and the person's name and then I suddenly remembered her first name and I went Rebecca and I went Rebecca and then the surname and then she went yeah and I go do you know who I am she goes no I said you used to teach me at school in maths I had the I was a keeper Tourette's she goes Oh, uh, yeah, I was speaking about you the other day to one of our colleagues because there's a kid there with Tourette's and she was saying how she used to teach somebody 15 years ago who had Tourette's and just a few days ago she was speaking about me, the person she taught with Tourette's. I've not seen her for 15 years and out of about 8,000 people, more than 8,000 people, it's like 50,000 people at the festival. I just so happened to walk past her at that time, recognise her, I just so happened to know it's her somehow. And she goes, how did I recognize her? I said, I don't know. I just recognized you. And I said, do you know the law of attraction? She goes, no, she didn't have a clue. And then I explained how our thoughts are magnets and whatever you're thinking, you'll be magnetized based on that thought to that thing or reality or person. And the fact that she was speaking about me a few days before or weeks before, and I come across her after 15 years, just shows me how powerful the quantum field is, how it's listening to every single thought vibration, whether or not you are actively consciously thinking about it or unconsciously or subconsciously thinking about it. It is responding every second of the day. And the only difference is, is that if you're aware of it, when things like that happen, that you were having the conversation a few weeks before about the said thing. And to me, that's the best law of attraction story to date in my life. 
<laughs> that's a really cool story <laughs> and you you are perfectly right about it it's exactly what that is our mind constantly creates our reality all the time and especially the subconscious mind that's why we have to work so hard in cleansing our subconscious mind from programming and all sorts of concepts that the subconscious mind lives by and we have a lot more subconscious mind than we have conscious mind so even more important also is that we keep our conscious mind in alignment with what we really want to experience so if we want to experience a beautiful and abundant life in which we know who we are in which things fall easy into our path we need to make sure that that is the way how we think and that is exactly then attracting all of the things that create this especially if you think about one part consciousness that we are aware of and that we can control and or lead or guide in the way how it thinks and then we have six parts which are subconscious and these guys do whatever they want and project and attract all based on the concepts and and everything that is going on over a very very long time all the all the patterns and programmings and and so it's even more important that we get this one the one that we really do have a say in and into the right mindset so right mindset is so all there is this is a beautiful story shows how these things come together and how powerful our mind really is especially in the time right now where quantum field is getting stronger and stronger and stronger and it is attracting more and more and more all of our thoughts are aligning with one another the whole time i'm sure there was something for her and for you in this meeting otherwise it would have never your mind would have never created this it was it, there's never a coincidence it's nothing ever is a coincidence ever <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and so i was walking down towards the stage and in the split second they walked off and i says i'm gonna go so i quickly hugged the people that i was with and i walked back within 10 seconds of walking back i found an iphone 14 on the floor right and this is the sixth iphone 14 i have found this year i found three at my health club i found that one on the floor and i found two elsewhere or whatever i just i keep finding iphones and i'm like if i hadn't have walked back at that point some dickhead at the festival might have picked it up sold it and the owners would have never have seen that phone ever again so what i've realized is that we are being guided on quantum energy and the higher your vibration the more of god's work you have to do so i always said that the universe knows and trusts me to get that phone back to the owner so god's like fuck one of my children have lost their phone who's in the area that i trust that can go and get it for me oh oliver's there oliver there's a phone there ping i get the signal i'm gonna go now guys see you later fuck there's a phone and i had it on the whole evening knowing that maybe someone will call it a friend a family member hi i found your friend's phone call the partner and say i've got it the next day there was a notification on the iphone saying hi this phone's lost cash reward i put out to the universe the night before i'm going to get some money because i put i spent some money on some rings at the festival so i said i'm going to get 100 pounds right because that's how much the rings cost and then they were at the door and i gave them the phone back didn't expect anything they gave me 30 quid it wasn't 100 quid not the point the point is that that feedback loop of doing something good putting it out there and it coming back now if i didn't put the 100 pound figure on it because the rings were 100 quid i would have been grateful for nothing i got 30 quid so the moral of the story is is that if we trust real-time downloads real time meaning leave now don't think oh i need to leave and then wait 10 seconds and then leave the phone's gone you didn't get the 30 quid they've now got to get another phone hassles insurance they've got to call up all these events that would have happened don't exist anymore because of one action i took so it's almost like it is my responsibility to trust the downloads in real time because there's knock-on effects for everyone else around me in the quantum field yeah it's very 
and uh, cool how you call it like uh, the, the immediate downloads this is the thing that i teach also in my Hilo training is to um really don't think always respond to your first impulse like this is also in healer work and and then the path that you're walking um becoming yourself it's like when we think it it's already too late like yes. we have to respond to the i mean so this is what i call the inner voice the voice of your heart this is the voice of your higher self whatever you want to call it it is the voice of god which you are god like there is not one god we are all god so this, we are all god consciousness little particles of um god consciousness and so of course we're always tapped into this greater picture to the greater um context of everything and if we just start to learn to trust that first impulse just like you said you know like don't think 10 seconds don't think like yes thinking is very very important and um, while we're creating the life that we want to create like uh, think positive thoughts and all of those kind of things what i just said but then also don't think like really follow these these impulses like they might not always make sense right away but eventually you will see more and more and more and yes you're right the more you awakened you become the more aligned you become with this voice, with your highest calling, with your true self, the more God's work you have to do. That means just that you are more present to listening to these things and that you are reacting more to these things. It's everybody else could do the same thing. It's just that they're not so aware uh, yet. They're not receiving so much input. So it, 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 it's always <clears throat> there the whole time. So one of the things I've been uh, mastering lately by choice is um, everything that comes into our head is basically a snakes and ladders going up to the top. Imagine a snakes and ladders board. You've got zero, got the ladder, all the way to the left to 10, up the ladder, 10 to 20, up the ladder, 20 to 30. But God's at the very, God's at the very top and there's no, there's no number. It's not 100. It does it's infinite right yeah god's just up yeah. there somewhere so you've got to keep going up the snakes and ladders to find the hundred but there is no a hundred so every thought that comes into our mind is trying to get us to ascend higher on the energetic scale and let's just say that you suddenly don't like your job you're supposed to then hand your notice into your boss immediately trust that any job's going to come someone says hey i've got a job coming do you want it next day boom you've got a job instead we linger and we procrastinate and oh wish i could get a new job and they're in their oh, fucking depressed boring. state for months and months and then it's too late the opportunity that would have been there had they have been free has gone so now you've got to wait around for a bit for another thing to come along and then all of a sudden when things don't go right for people it's because now they're not supposed to be there and more things are going wrong so it's confirmation of everything goes wrong why did everything go wrong but that's because when they got the download which is ascending them to the highest state of everything's in flow, they're not there because they don't trust that first impulsive thought. So mastering that thought and acting upon it now, five seconds is too late. And I realize that sometimes when I get a thought, the longer it passes, five, 10 seconds, to me, I then sit on that five, 10 seconds that has passed, which becomes 20, and it's too late. And it wasn't meant for me, to be, meant for me. It was. And I sat on it and it wasn't. And then you let it go. Because if it was right for me, I would have done it within a second. But if two, three seconds passes, trust from experience that that now is not right for you. And somehow it was then in the quantum field, something moved. Somebody wanted this and now they didn't 10 seconds later, which means now you're not needed because you were part of that going up the snakes and ladders. <laughs> yeah it's a, that's a, is that a game is that a board game i don't know that game <laughs> it's a board game where you basically roll the dice and it says six so you go one two three four five six mm -hmm. eventually you get to the ladder then you go mm -hmm. up and then you just keep going yeah. to 100 basically um yes, yes. i mean the more we uh, align within heaven and earth um the, the less we have those sideway goings you know like uh, we, we we will go um much more in a straight um, path or we basically center into this really nice anchoring um between heaven and earth and then there, there will be a good flow we 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 notice this 
how our chakras are aligned, you know, like they're all kind of along our spine. When we meditate, we sit in, in a, with a straight spine. There's reasons for this, that we are connected with our buttocks to the ground. And then we um, open ourselves up to the divine. We're not like hunching over or like this, you know, like there's there's reasons. And the more we are in alignment, the, the more the energy will just flow through and the less we have to actually move. We don't have to do one through six go this way and go that way we're just very aligned in the center and things will just go through as they're supposed to be for us like every one of us has their own part in this huge composition of um creation and we don't really need to do anything other than what we're designed to be or do and everything else will be done by whoever was designed for that so just like you said if it's for you it will be yours and if it's not yours then it will be for someone else to pick it up and eventually we'll all be there like it's just gonna take a maybe another hundred years or so until <laughs> it will go very much faster than than the way to get to where we are now we talked about this in our last uh, um podcast that uh we are now in a different time and it took us a long time to get to that return point and now that we're past the return point everything will be so much faster like it will take us way less linear time um to get back in and to rise into greater consciousness and awakening and everything will be so much faster so exponentially faster than getting to this point because on a path of separation, time is experienced very differently than it is experienced on a path of unification. So it will not take thousands and thousands of years to get back to this greater collective consciousness in which still every one of us individually um, exists, but in a harmony with one another. Um, uh, so, I don't know how long it's going to take in linear time, but it's never going to take as long as it. Uh, we will see huge changes in the next 100 years in, in that context. So, is, uh, yeah, so I was looking around the art gallery at the festival and there's paintings there, 400 quid, 100 quid, 10,000 pounds, 20,000 pounds. I've never bought a painting before and I walked past this painting and it was just talking to my brain. It was the most colorful painting ever and it was 400 quid and i suddenly got this uh oh i'm gonna do something crazy and i'm gonna buy it but then i sort of <laughs> sat on it like just wanted to just let the feelers come to me and say yes this feels right or not and i just went fuck i'm gonna do it and then i went up to the person who i bought it from and i was like i'm gonna buy it and he was like really you sure I'm, yeah i'm gonna buy it and then i said to him about how to ascend to the highest level of consciousness you need to act on every single the highest feeling that you get in any moment that gives you the most excitement so for example if i'm suddenly get this really amazing feeling to buy the painting you're supposed to go with it yeah that's all you're supposed to act on the thing that gives you the most excitement in this very moment go for it because on any energetic terms you're ascending to a higher vibration by following the thing that gives you the most excitement which is raising your vibration so if you keep doing that, you literally will ascend and your yeah. energy will get higher and higher and higher. And what's up there? More things on that higher frequency that make you feel good are the people on that same vibration. And I then said that analogy and he was like, man, that's so deep. I'm going to take that with me forever. I said, act upon the thing that gives you the most excitement at any given moment to ascend. And he says, wow. I said, I'm a podcaster. He goes, so am I. I said, we're going to do a podcast and we're going to talk about this. I go, Wonderful. of course, he's a podcaster. <laughs> um, and uh, just quickly, when I was 21 and I had my awakening, I was watching loads of Bob Proctor and The Secret and Abraham Hicks. And I was acting on every single thought in every single moment. So I'd get the feeling to go in my car. I'd go in my car. I'd get the feeling to go out the car. I'd leave the car. I'd then get the feeling to go to the casino. I'd go to the casino. When I'm at the casino, I get the feeling to go to the other casino. And on the way, I get the feeling to go back. And I was literally impulsively acting on the last thought to see where I'd end up in the universe. 
cut long story short, the person I was falling in love with was called Robin. That's all I was thinking about at that moment in my time. When am I going to see that person, Robin, again? Following each thought to the petrol station to leave the petrol station, every single person that I met at the petrol station, at the cashier, at the casino, every single person in a row, five people, were all called Robin. What's crazy is that that's a really unique, rare name. Not many Robins exist in, you know, where, where I live. So mm -hmm. there was five in a row because I was so focused on the Robin, which is the end goal of the 100 on the Snakes and Ladders board. But to get to the top, I had to follow each thought to go up the ladder to get to Robin. So all these Robins along the way essentially would have led me to the actual Robin, which is the one I fell in love with. And cut a long story short, I never saw her again because this was about me evolving and becoming whole within myself, not needing anybody else. And by following this vibration to get love, which is to get wholeness, I was forced to go within and find it on my own without her. And that's that story. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's actually, there's so many on the path of awakening. We have so many of those. And the more you play with it, like awakening, I just made a post about it. It, it often feels so um, uncomfortable because we we are not home in, in the deep sleep anymore. Like what gave us comfort and like ignorance is bliss. Um, kind of while we are asleep, it really is bliss you know like we are in this sleep state we do suffer in this state but it is part of our normal and we accept it as what is and uh, it is comfortable and what we know so it, it's our home and then we awaken into that vastness of light and consciousness and it's very very um wonderful and beautiful but at the same time it's scary and unprotected and uh, and, and and really almost uh, we don't know how to act and how to not lose ourselves and, and and who are we in all of that vastness and and in all of these infinite possibilities and this div divinity that we really are and um, and so now we go back to this try to go back to the sleep state and the sleep state does not feel the same anymore now it feels limited and dark and and and, and uncomfortable and and all that feeling of homeless and hominess is is gone and so then we swim back into this uh, awake state and we go back and forth and get back and forth and night a place feels like home and night a place feels like something where we want to settle in because it, it, what we all look for is safety and 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 that uh, that that sense of home and uh, so the solution really is on the path to the solution it is play with it play with your old state play with the new state do little things like little things that sound little but are big things like what you did you know follow those thoughts go from one casino go to the next one turn around again you know like uh, go to all sorts of other places like play with it the more you play and the more you smile into that change the easier it will be to rise above it because the solution is not either or state it is not sleep or awake it is to rise above it and become everything become the sleep state become the awake state become the limitation become the vastness freedom become it all and if you understand to rise above it and make it all part of you then that's that's the end game that's when you are everything and then you are home in yourself and every single state is part of you but that is that is the end game um it it is where we need to go to we it's not about deciding sleep or awake but play with both states the much the, the more you can play with it the easier it will be oops look at this. what the fuck is that <laughs> <laughs> um so that's the universe going absolutely amen yeah, yeah, um yeah. <laughs> so what was i gonna say uh we were yeah, so a lot of people, a lot of people, their their brains have got so much activity and so many thoughts in the day that they just haven't got time to do even 20 percent of those thoughts. And a lot of those thoughts are materialistic tasks like do the dishwasher, yeah. take yeah. the bottle to the bottle bank, not how to ascend on a higher level by acting on your own intuition. So it's like they never get to that point. And because our brains are so active during the day, they're active during the night. 
So we're not sleeping and resting. We're not still where information and downloads can come to us. If we're not still during the day, the only time to be still is either in meditation or sleeping. But because our brains are so active, we're tossing and turning or waking up through the night. We're not even going into a state where we can actually rest for an hour where information can come to us that the next day we could act on. Like, oh, I had this dream about my friend from school. I'm going to reach out to them. And then you realize that they're thinking about you and you go for a coffee and then you fall in love and have children, right? Doesn't happen because your brain was still thinking about, oh, fuck, I didn't do the dishwasher or oh, I wonder what she said to me, like when my back was turned. We're not in, we're not going into deep states anymore. And I have also realized that a lot of awakened people, they're, they're single and they don't really want the family life or kids or partners. Partners are an inconvenience. So what I've realized is that the more these awakened souls are awakening and raising the vibration and hanging out with more awakened people, which raise the vibration even more, the higher they go, the more out of sync they become to the rest of the world. And yeah. they just don't fit in energetically with the average person. Even living with somebody, as much as you may love them, you're so used to trusting your own downloads in real time with no one else there. You can't do that with a partner. Your partner wants to go out for dinner. He wants to go to the cinema. They want to go to get food and you're like oh but i've just had this download to go to the casino and he's like well i'm hungry are we gonna get food or not i just need to go to the casino first and then come back halfway what the fuck's the point of that i'm evolving what, what but what about me well we can evolve together but i need to go there first because then i'm still going to ascend and i'm still going to be with you but if you keep ascending you're going to become out of sync with that person and then you're going to leave them so i've realized that the awakened people are actually on this path to raise humanity's consciousness and we don't have the norm life of family and husband and wife and the traditional life because without us they won't know this information and if we settle for that type of life we wouldn't evolve to the next state in my opinion not for everybody but just generally people my age i'm seeing patterns that we're all single we don't want to be held down we like the idea of love but as soon as we get it we're like fuck this i'm not can't handle another person in my energy i'm like well good luck because you're only evolving and it's only going to get worse <laughs> so, so that's a really good uh, thing let me enlighten that a little bit uh, further you know like so yeah I, I oliver i don't remember how old you are like how old you 31 are. oh yeah okay so um what i just told you you know like about the going from one state into another and then rising above it once you have risen above the, then you can be with any partner, whether this is an evolved partner or not, whether it's an awakened partner or not, it doesn't matter anymore because you have become everything. You have become the limitation and the sleep state as much as you have become the awakened state because unification and full awakeness means to be everything and not to exclude low vibration. Like low vibration is just as much a part of you as high vibration. It exists in a, in a, context of unity and so the the like uh, i'm a really good example for this i i'm probably one of the most that i know evolved you know like human beings when it comes to consciousness um i i have almost full control over my existence um i mean not control but in the higher context guidance uh, from the highest vibration and still, I love almost anything very human. Like I, I like I, I. Some of my best friends are not at, at all awakened. They are very deep asleep, and <laughs> and I love them. I couldn't love them more. I have the best time with them. They don't distract me from my purpose or from what I'm here to do. It is all simultaneously possible. So once your generation and. It is a good observation that you're making, like uh, is rising above it. And that's the next stage now. Like when you become it all, then you will suddenly know that you can do the drama again. And it's not going to distract you from evolving. You know, like you will be mm. evolved within all the drama. You will be evolved within all the low vibration. You will have the high vibration. It will all be there simultaneously. And that's the beauty about it. Like, this is where we're all going, that we don't have to neglect the humanity, humanity's ways, you know, like the, even the low vibrational things, like having a 
drink and getting to a totally fuck face or whatever like uh, um i i don't enjoy those kind of things but some people do enjoy it like i buy the bag that is a, a car's worth of money because i really love the bag and and it doesn't i don't have to have it but i en enjoy beautiful things and and it, it, it is not taking anything away from me knowing that these things matter none and this is all about uh, me just being me in in my life and whether i have things or i don't have things it doesn't matter but i can still enjoy it while it's there and i'm not attached to it so this is rising above it creates all of this um detachment and in the same time it fully involves us back into life like what we had done you know like by climbing the ladder like we have kind of become almost unrelatable a little bit to the rest of the world i don't know you said it really well um uh, just uh, before um and you don't really resonate and respond to the things that normal people um deal with that changes again once you have really evolved into your unification of everything you can be it all and you will never lose you will never lose your high vibration anymore like you can eat anything you want you can like i should be the most unhealthiest person in the world because i travel every few sometimes every few days i'm on a plane then i'm sometimes in four weeks on three different continents in six different countries and i'm on conferences and i have um lots and lots to do and I'm on demand all the time. I'm in hotels, I eat in restaurants because I don't have time to cook in uh, no place to cook really when I'm traveling so much. I should be sick, but I'm not sick. I'm totally unaffected. I'm breezing through all of these different um, uh, stages of life because my vibration is, is totally home. And so I'm not affected by this. And if I am getting affected, then I know what to do to come back to my vibration that is true to me while I'm in all of this other vibration and make it all aligned. And this is also the quantum field right now. The quantum field allows us to align ourselves with even the lowest vibration. I don't know if you, I don't know, have we ever spoken about Leela Quantum Tech? Um, it's, the, it's the quantum technology that uh, we produce. Like when we put one of these technology and this field into your home and your body will not respond to wi-fi signals that are very low vibration anymore and we're not shielding you with this field we're just making you able to rise your raise your vibration to a level that whatever comes your way will not harm you anymore because you will start to harmonize with what comes in and so like think of it like a buffer if you if you if you have no buffer, then the Wi-Fi signal comes in, it hits you straight onto your physical reality, your, your blood starts to clot and all of these reactions, and then you have not enough oxygen, and then you have uh, organ um, uh, failure, or not failure, but like a compromise. And then you have this field that your vibration creates, your strong and high vibration creates. Now the Wi-Fi signal comes in and it has to go through the through all of this high vibration and by the end it it comes like this sometimes it's even that you your organs become even better being surrounded by this field like we have done so many scientific studies about this it may be interesting for you to look into that um they're all on the website i don't want to do any kind of advertising here but this is something it's no absolutely say what you want to say uh, <clears throat> it, it, it is so it is so powerful to know that we don't need to shield ourselves anymore today. Like when we have the right vibration and we understand our system understands how to keep that vibration, that no matter what comes our way, no matter who wants something different than what we think we need to do right now or that pulls us into our evolving path, it can all become part of it. It can all harmonize. It is all about us. Anyway, we are. There's only you that exists from your perspective and there's only me that exists from my perspective and nothing else exists anyway. So it is a, I mean, that takes it a little bit <laughs> further. Um, but to know that we have it in our hand and that we are empowered enough when we are being hinted to how to do it, 
um, nothing has to harm us anymore. And I'm a really good example for for that, that even when there's drama, and sometimes I have drama in my life, um, it's there's a part of me that stays totally un... un uh, how do you say it? Unfazed. Unfazed, yeah, unfazed, yes, thank you. I was looking for the English word. Um, um, and then I'm fully aware of that other part and I can take that other part that is struggling. It's not that often anymore, but when it's there, then I can just take it into the arms of my unfazed self and and allow it to exist simultaneously with and not feel any lesser or not feel any less awakened or less evolved or anything. I can just say, well, this is me being human, me living in a dual existence while it still is a dual existence. It is, we're always going to be everything. And, and, and when I have, when I come into touch with my inner child because of a situation or something, then I can just be fully aware of that. That was something that happened and that hurt. And I can, <clears throat> Place it in the unity. It doesn't have to be excluded and say, oh, I, I need to get rid of this because this is disturbing me in my awakening process. Or uh, maybe also, you know, what I was thinking when you were saying this, uh, follow these impulses. Maybe we should distinguish to your listeners um, between needs impulses. And be, you said it a few times, you know, like the impulses that bring you to greater ascension you know like so that's a really really important thing because some people might hear oh i should just follow every impulse oh let's eat the whole cake or <laughs> could also be something that gets you further but you have to really look is this evolving me on the snakes and letters thing or is this uh just a basic need um succumb succumbing you know like i don't know if that's a word in english but uh yeah, so that, that is something we need to distinguish. These first impulses, um, sometimes they are very much attached to our needs. So really, we need to look at these first impulses in in context to the ascension um, so that they, that they actually evolve us. There's a little bit of a a path to to learn to distinguish one and the other. <laughs> because yeah. our, our subconscious mind that likes to trick us into into fulfilling the needs but fulfilling the needs is not what gets us into higher vibration that is keeps us in lower vibrations so this is but it, i definitely the more you follow these impulses the more you will see where they lead you and the more you will understand the difference between the ones that take you up the ladder and that and the ones that sidetrack you like into into a vertical movement horizontal yeah but yeah, even on the thought of like, you know, having another cigarette, having another alcohol, having another pack of crisps, having another bite of cake, even though that as a whole isn't good, if you make yourself sick by eating so much cake, you won't want it next time. So actually, if you you're learn those thoughts of one more bite, one more bite, oh, fuck me, I don't want to have cake ever again. So now you have evolved because now you're going to lose weight and you're going to eat healthier. So doing... Obviously, jumping off a cliff, surviving and jumping off again where you're probably going to die. That's different. But something that is ultimately going to be good versus bad, act on. I want to bring up to the point about that machine you said. You saying there's a quantum machine that you can put in a house that will... It's, that... it's not a machine. It's a, it's a, it looks like a... I, I show it to you. Give me a second. You can see it. This is a really big version that I have here. And what does it do exactly? You see it? Yeah. What this is do? a really big one. This is also a really strong one. Um, so this is, it, it, because of the plates, the plates are aluminium, metal holds charge really well. Um, um, the plates are charged in the original technology. So they're charged with pure quantum energy. And when you put these plates into a parallel state, they create a field and this field, this is one of the strongest quantum fields that exist on earth officially because we don't know what exists in officially, but officially this is the highest measurable field that exists. Um, that is in, it radiates about two kilometers um, 
but the strongest it is definitely within the plates. And you can now charge almost any object, quantum charge, right, raise the vibration of an object, basically, in this field, measurable. And we, we can, like, I put my hand into this block in five minutes of me having my hand in there, like, all my blood clots will start to separate like all the cells in my blood will start to separate like and I you will... can and you could measure that yes uh, yes a doctor could measure what you're saying yes. that your cells all we've are done we've done so many studies 60 plus studies from super well-renowned institutes in the world have done randomized and double blind and sham controlled studies uh, look them up they are so interesting and, okay and then you you put this into your house and you will have no response to Wi-Fi or any of these. Uh, you don't even have to be in the block. You just have to have the block in the house. And you're, so you're saying that the block quantum will radiate up to two kilometers. Yeah. Fuck me. Two kilometers is, is far. Yeah. And it, it will get weaker the further it goes. You know, of like course. Uh, and this is the strongest within the in, within the place. Yes. And yes. your home, which is usually like how 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 wide is a home, like twenty by twenty meters. Um, so all your neighbors will have the same effect. You might even be I don't know where you live. Like uh, where do you live? Uh, In the middle of uh, the city, basically. London. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so so uh, there's lots and lots of blocks in London. Um, so you already within the quantum field because we we've been selling these now for the last four years like warm rolls, um, oh. and uh, because we are we're able to prove the um, effect of the field and that it has on the physical body, it became such a huge hit. And we were actually just in London on on a uh, on the biohacker summit. And there's lots and lots of blocks in London. So you are already probably in the vicinity of one of these because they're also responding to one another. These consciousness fields, because a quantum field is a consciousness field, they respond to one another. They, 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 and they're pure. Like there's no, we cannot manipulate this field anymore because it is so pure. That's what the so magic that we managed to create is that, that it is so absolutely pure that you cannot use it for any manipulation you can use it only for the greater good of all creation basically so for example when you say that they will talk with each other are you basically saying that you've got a wi-fi box and then you've got a booster next to a booster next to a booster and essentially you can get wi-fi all the way over there when the wi-fi yeah. box is over there because all the boosters link it together yes so here's what 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 I tell you. We had a because of all of this stuff that was happening mid July, you know, like the, the rise into this crisis, you know, like that a lot of people have foreseen. Um, <laughs> we were kind of called to do something, and now we have I don't know how many blocks are all over the world already. And so what we did, we called in for um, a webinar, like I mean, for a Zoom call with everybody that wanted to take part that has a block. And we created like a meditation and connecting to the field and, and creating like a huge network, basically. Exactly in that time to, to rise the consciousness and the vibration of earth and everything. Exactly in that time, it was measurable how earth's vibration spiked in vibration. Fuck Ex off. While we have 300 people were in this call and we were all connecting, we were guiding this, like how everybody connects to, to their hearts and then to the blocks that they own and can, and create this huge like net, you know, like around the world. And Earth, I said it in the, in the, in the webinar, I said, oh my God, Earth is opening up right now. It's like she's responding to what we're doing. And later on, somebody sent me, who, who, somebody who monitors the, the vibration of Earth the whole time. And it was exactly in that time that it spiked huge and then came back to normal, you know, like uh, later on. So if, for example, you had cancer in your arm and you put your arm under that thing, would it mm -hmm. basically heal the cancer? And if so, how quickly? So we cannot say anything about that, but uh, uh, claim anything about that. But with yeah. what we have experienced with thousands of people that tinker around. I mean, we still discover what can be done with this, right? Like it's, it's a very, 
um, like in the beginning, you know, we wanted to create a pure quantum field and then we did. And then we found out all of these things that it does uh, later on with, uh, with experimenting and lots of people experimenting. And so, yes, there were uh, people that were able to release what they had. Cancer is an aggression to itself, right? So if you look at it from a spiritual perspective. So if you are able to respond to that field and it cr creates higher vibration and you learn your lessons without having to punish yourself or destruct yourself or so the cancer can go away surely but um sometimes you're also meant to learn something with that cancer and maybe you are not fast enough to catch on to whatever it is that you're learning or um, are you supposed to learn or supposed to evolve to some souls also want to come out of a, a certain life situation that they are and move on to the next one so cancer we call it also the karma kiss um it's like a it's like almost like okay i'm deciding to let go of this and restart new you know so uh, the, the field will respond to your highest calling if you're meant to die with cancer the field will never heal you spontaneously from the cancer. But if you're not meant to, and you are learning the lesson that is behind your disease, then the field will definitely get you where you can learn it without you having to suffer through it. You know, like uh, because so many people are not aware of their, that their disease is actually a story that could take them further on the snakes and ladders situation. Um, but the, the, yes, it, it will definitely what you had just experienced with the teacher that's a quantum field right like this is the response of, uh, of of your thoughts her thoughts and all of that then it brought you together like a law of attraction so this is the same what happens here if you have one of those blocks and you use it for intentions you use it maybe even you have you live very close to it all of a sudden it will draw in all of these things into your life in a perfect alignment, you know, you you, you think about, oh, I, I should really find somebody that does all my content creating. And all of a sudden, you meet this person that is the perfect fit for you. Um, because the block will always resonate with what brings you forth and what creation wants to bring forth. So it will mimic my energy and act as an antenna and amplify my thoughts. Yes. It yes. amplifies yes. the amplifies. field. So if my field is wanting a content creator, it yes. will amplify that by two, three, five X or whatever. Yes. Holy yes. shit. How much is that? Uh, this really big one here, we don't even sell this strength. Um, but that is, I think, 1800 or 1900. I don't know. And then all... yeah. Holy shit. Okay, and you so can, you can, you can, op you can charge any object, like all your watches, your bands, all of the things that you're wearing on your wrist, like you can charge them with quantum energy, like for 30 seconds in the block. And then they, ra they radiate pure quantum energy onto your pulse the whole time. It's like, you want to take them off at night though, because then you will have so much energy that you might not sleep. Um, oh my you also God. I need to get this. Yeah. And your and your nose ring, all of the metal that is in your in your in your body, you know, like you want it at least um, the vibration high enough so it is in perfect alignment with your own vibration. And just ten seconds, twenty seconds in the block is uh, is enough. It's an amazing technology. I mean, it's a not. I mean, it's a technology. We call it a technology, but it's just a field. What's the link for people to buy this? Uh, it's lilaq.com. And for uh, people in England, I think it's better for them to uh, order in the in the um, German store. So that is Leela, L E E L A Q dot D E or dot com. Like uh, <clears throat> find the studies on there. Like there's a link to all the studies. It's beautiful to read through all of this amazing stuff that uh, has occurred in the last uh, four years, really. Um, yeah. Amazing. Um amazing I'll put, the link... <laughs> I'll, I'll put the link in the description let's end that there so if you had one day left to live what is the one thing that you would tell the whole world find yourself and be only that like really find yourself find what is really true to you and don't compromise anymore not for anybody okay right anything you want to promote or plug um 
what does that mean <laughs> websites instagram anything uh, okay you wanna... well well if you follow if you want to follow me my instagram is crew essence is c-r-u and then essence e-s-s-e-n-c-e -E, all together crew essence and uh, my website is same it's www.crew minus essence.com so this is if you want to follow me and then um if you want to look into more of the little you know, quantum tech stuff there's other things like less expensive things like we have a capsule um that you wear that is charged with pure quantum energy and a heal frequency that is creating the body response to come back into its original state um mm. so but it also does a lot of on a soul level so that is on lilaq.com or lilaq.de l l e l a l l l e e l a q dot d e or dot com thanks for listening if you like this episode please remember to subscribe turn the bell notifications on like the episode and comment below and if you want to follow me on instagram it's yes king oliver take a look at the other videos to your side and if you just want to listen to this podcast, you can do so on Apple and Spotify and most other platforms by going to talkwitholiver.com.